Get over here! Floor number two, baby! Another 50 enemies. Yeah, th these these floors don't mess around. There's a lot to uh, there's a lot to keep track of, and immediately I'm looking at Joshua, who can probably take handle this Cyclops and that um, Maildwin by standing right here. Yeah, and we're we going more just... um, sword wielder focused this time because there's a lot of Cyclopses and Maildwins, so a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of axes on the field. Yeah, and we also got a couple of these guys down here, which... Steel Blade, Steel Lance, Steel Sword. Um, as a matter of fact, we can plant someone there if we want. How about Ephraim? Hey, it's a little late for this, but did you do a sync test before we started? Oh, yeah, I already did. Okay. <laughs> How's everybody doing? <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> I, 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 I like to think that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was looking at um, strategy wiki stuff. Nah, nah, you're good, you're good, brother. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to plant um, you there. Who knows? Maybe he'll go after Marissa, and I can have a little fun here. So this right here is basically the safe zone for the most part. So yeah, um, not much uh, is going to be going on here except just moving forward and doing what I gotta do with this, uh, mess of monsters. Yeah, personally, I'm... I mean, I've heard that the Lagdal runes is really hard, especially, like, we are playing on... Hard mode. Hard mode, but I'm not, like, super worried about it. The only part I am... Well, I, I, I can see how there could be, like, a bit of a swarm here, but if we keep using the environment to our advantage. Wouldn't that have been nice if Joshua did more than one damage? Yeah. Joshua, I, I'm realizing how low your strength is. Oh dear. Or is it just this guy's defense? I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see, um, I, I guess we'll see how it works with that, with this guy. Nah, his strength is not that big. I, I will say though, like, Especially because... Okay, that works. Yeah, if he's gonna keep critting. Yeah, no, that's fine. The thing is with Cyclops, like, I've always, like, saw them as, like, kind of like the monster variant of Berserkers, where it's, like, more high health than anything else. Yeah, high health. But... Average armor. But, hey, if they're gonna... If they're just gonna do that, then, like, I think that works out just fine. Um, Marissa. Let's see what you can do, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, Marissa's power isn't bad. Let's try this. <laughs> Oh, you love to see it. Yeah. You love to see it. So I got an interesting question for you. All right, hit me. Um, we were talking last episode about um what we want to see out of the next Fire Emblem and like what we would like to improve, what we would like to like see done better, uh, see done differently, and things like that. Um, if they were to ever introduce a new class to the game, what are some ideas you would like to see implemented? Um, like, if you were to create a yeah. totally new class for Fire Emblem and, like, implement it into the next game, what would you do? So, one thing I thought about, it wouldn't work as much in, like, a modern Fire Emblem game. It would work more in this style of Fire Emblem that has rescuing. Yeah. But my idea was a class that was kind of, like, combining qualities of armor units and a flyer. And basically, the point of them would be to be carriers okay. of other units. So kind of like Fiona's rescue, like, whole, like, savior thing, but yeah. on a flyer. Yeah, some sort of flying caravan-based unit. Okay. Like, I'm thinking, like... Like, not like not a straight-up Pegasus Knight or anything like that, but, like, some sort of, like, flying rider that yeah, is a whole... You get, like, another creature to do it, like... Like, so not a Pegasus or a Wyvern, but, like, that could be, like, what maybe, like, the Griffin Rider is in Awakening, or... <laughs> um, <laughs> this is funny. I, I suddenly, I suddenly thought, I, I suddenly imagined, um, Skyward Sword's, um, Beetle, like, with a flying fortress that, that, he, cool. pa that he pedals with a bike. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, yeah, maybe something like that where it's, like, it is a Pegasus with, like, a carriage on the back of it. Uh-huh. So it's, like, not really outfitted to fight very well. 
but it can take a unit somewhere. Honestly, like I wouldn't be I wouldn't be totally against that. That does sound pretty that that does sound pretty neat. Um I mean, rescuing isn't a thing after um, Awakening introduces a pair up, but Yeah, yeah. Like, the thing is, is, like, I can see them bringing back rescuing, especially because, I, I will admit, one thing I do kind of miss, uh, in, uh, from the previous games in the modern is the whole thing of, like, rescue someone and then you two do the classic take drop, uh, strategy. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's kind that's kind of, like, exploiting a mechanic that's already implemented into the game, but it was, but it was fun. I, I could see why they wanted to find an alternative to it. No, I get that, And, yeah. like, the parrot mechanic in Awakening was good, and I think they better refined it in, in Fates, mm -hmm. because they made it much more consistent what supporting versus pairing up did. I agree. Sorry, I'm just kind of, like, making sure that no other, like, units can make it to a certain square so that, um... Uh, Molder can do some. Oh yeah, some it's healing. Molder. Yeah, we still have Molder in this I was, party. I was looking at the screen thinking it was Artur, but no, that's a that's a basic cleric. It, it probably would have been a good idea to um, bring um, a mage user here, but I'm okay with like utilizing our physical units. Besides, that's what the uh, that that's what the um, yeah. sacred the sacred twin weapons are for. Um, from what I've come to understand, uh, the real tough chapter or a tough floor of this is going to be the third one okay so we're coming up on it yeah um so that's where we may like put molder to the side yeah um just so we can make sure oh hey we're not going to like i think we're we'll like going into any bad that. situations here yeah because i think that one's really heavy on um gorgons with high range oh got you stone and shadow shot so definitely a floor where we're gonna want our best units and maybe some of our better like resistant units yeah so probably natasha artur probably loot yeah gotcha but what about you what um do you have any ideas for classes they could still do i'm gonna be honest with you i came up with this question right on the spot so it's uh it's like something that damn garrick it is something that i do have to think about that being said um, the funny thing is, Engage kind of did it already. Yeah. Um, because, um, so Fire Emblem Three Houses, um, had the brawler, uh, the brawler, um, uh, thing. Yeah, the brawlers like, were cool. Yeah, the brawlers were cool. Like, you know, I like the fact, I like the idea of using, like, brass knuckles or, like, gauntlets and whatnot. So what was, they were very cool, but remind me, because I didn't use them a whole lot. What was, like, the advantage to using a brawler versus using... A weapon because like the weapon triangle wasn't they, they like don't have a place in the weapon triangle they do actually okay do they um so you know how like you know the the weapon the way the weapon triangle and engage worked which by the way i thought was brilliant yeah is that you can disarm your uh, opponents by uh exploiting the weapon triangle advantage yeah so you essentially break them they're disarmed for a turn so um, they, so they can't counter yeah now, normally you would think, oh, this doesn't work with the key adepts or, like, the uh, martial masters because, like, you know, oh, they use martial art, they don't have weapons. Um, they disarm healers, mages, and archers. That's right. Yeah, so their whole thing is, oh, hey, here's a mage that has this, like, really, really powerful spell, and, like, even if you attack it with a swordsman, they still have, like, enough, like, health that they can counterattack. So they were Not like, a problem with the key adepts. They were, like, ranged saboteurs. Yeah, basically, like, oh, hey, this guy has a really powerful mage, or archer or something like that the key adept is your is your uh, go-to for that cool which like again i thought was cool like that the, that is a really good way to handle that um and that's probably that that's like the main reason why i was kind of like oh, okay yeah they uh, already have that handled so um i guess like you know all right cool um so because yeah like i i would like i would have liked uh i would have said like oh hey some sort of like martial artist character because i'm big on like martial arts in like you know video games like that god yeah. knows i love the monks from D. &D. it's my favorite yeah. class but they kind of already did it and i kind of dig the fact that they also double as healers you know yeah like um like john john uh john yeah. yeah john and um fram i think was her name yeah fram yeah i barely used fram but yeah, I, I i can't stand fram <laughs> but uh anyone who anyone who's uh anyone who's been around the block around my like circle of i guess you could say twitter and youtube knows that i'm not a fan of fram uh, I'm, I'm not i guess i'm not really a fan of like a lot of the characters yeah in, in... i couldn't i couldn't like i couldn't summon up like particular disdain of her because i kind of felt like 
in a way, she kind of reminds me of Faye, who was added in um, uh -huh. in uh, Shadows of Valencia. I who get... is just sort of like obsessed with Alm. I don't like Faye very much. I don't like Faye either. Um, I guess the difference there for me personally is that like I could easily ignore Faye. Yeah. Like as soon like yeah she's like grating, but like after a while you can very much easily ignore her. Fram's like in your core group at the beginning. Yeah. Exactly. It's like okay yeah I can easily ignore Fram after a certain like amount of time. That much is true. But she is like. She's, like, a very, very prominent character for, like, the first bit of Engage, and, um, they say, uh, first impressions make a big difference, and, uh, Fram did not give me a very good first impression, for all, <laughs> all things considered. I guess just in my mind, I didn't particularly equate that with Fram, because all of the characters are like that. You know what? I'm not going to blame you on Everybody that Everybody is just like, oh, you are the Divine Dragon, which, like, you are, like, mm -hmm. to be fair, you are, like, a Masonic figure. Yeah, but, game. like, so some characters handled it better than but. others. Like, one example I can think of is um, Pandreo. Like, yeah, th this is your literal god Pandreo, but yeah. you were more tactful than some of these other characters. But, um, that's getting, that's getting off topic. The I mean, I think a lot of people know this about me, but the, like, self-insert, like, the main character is you and everybody loves you thing is something that doesn't really appeal to me that much. Nah, I, I don't blame you in the slightest for that one. Um, yeah, because, like, um, it, it, it screams Chosen One Syndrome, yeah. uh, for, uh, for lack of a better term. Which, there's lots of stories that do great things with a, a Chosen One character, but it can be... To me, kind of like a writing crutch uh -huh. to say, like, you know, part of your job as a story writer is to figure out why your character is doing the story. And Chosen One stories are kind of just like a shortcut for that where you say, like, oh, well, it's their destiny, so they have to do it. Yeah, which, like, you know, again, writing crutch uh, in a way for a lot of stories, but we've seen situations like that done well. In fact, we kind of covered it, like, very extensively in our Top 10 Heroes video. Yeah, like, um, Cause it's like you Wind know, Waker. Wind Waker, I think, is a great example of turning that on its head. Mm -hmm. That, like, you know, Link kind of becomes the hero of the winds, the guy who, you know, needs mm -hmm. to be the one to take down Ganondorf. But he does it for a much smaller, more personal reason, which is his sister. That's, like, what starts the journey. Yeah. And in a, in a similar vein, um, if we're talking, like, you know, Fire Emblem specifically, right? One character that I feel does the whole Chosen One thing, but is still, like, um, done well, in my opinion, is Alm. Because for all intents and purposes, Alm and Celica are basically the, like, chosen yeah. manifestations of Duma and Mila. Yeah. But they work for it. They yeah. are, they are, they still have flaws. They still grow, like, have to, like, grow up from those flaws. I think, um, I think, uh, Shadows of Valencia handles that very well. Um, and, like, I can, un I can also understand the idea of, oh, well, like, that's not fair, th that's not a fair thing to say necessarily because, um, you know, um, Alir is a literal god, so, like, you know, people are going to be, you know, having this, like, sort of, like, messiah, um, mentality with this character. And I get that. You want to know another character who had a messiah, who had a whole messiah mentality, but their character was handled very well? Micaiah! Micaiah the Messiah. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, the, Micaiah's whole arc in part... Like, I stand that I really, really like how Micaiah was handled in part three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her character took a complete 180, but I think it was in character because she was way in over her head. Yeah. Like, I, I end up kind of just accepting it for what it is and liking it. Mm -hmm. I understand some people think Micaiah was, like, done dirty as a character. She kind of was to a certain degree, but when it comes to specifically the whole, um, oh, this is, like, so out of character because she's doing such heinous things, um, um, aspect, I don't think so. The, the part where I think she got a little shafted was when, um, basically she got hijacked by you. Yeah, I wish she could have had more of a, m more of a presence in the last arc of the game rather than just being a vehicle for the, for the deus ex goddess. And, like, that's kind of what the problem with the Chosen One thing is, is that it's just, mm -hmm. like, she's there because you know she's gonna be there because she's the main character. Yeah, that that's the main thing, though. It's, like, my, like, I've, I've noticed that a lot of people's issues with Micaiah uh, stem from Part 3. My issues with Micaiah stem from Part 4, and even then I don't think it's, like, that big a deal. Because her arc in uh, Part 3, I think, is, like, brilliantly yeah. handled. Because 
I, I like what one of the commenters said about it. It's it's a subversion of the Messiah archetype. Yeah, like I think I am very or critical. Deconstruction. I am very critical of her actions during part three, but that's what I like about it. Exactly. That like, oh yeah, when it's like your country that's in trouble and stuff, like. You know, she's able to go through part one with, like, the moral high ground and, like, this is what we have to do and do it for the people. It doesn't feel as good when you're, when protecting your country means doing, like, the Committing a stuff. genocide. Yeah, the stuff that, like, war entails. Yep. Yeah, she doesn't commit a genocide. Um, she does threaten to pour oil and burn a large army. Yeah. Which is pretty heinous, but... Which, I, I guess the whole genocide bit for me is, like, that one conversation she has with Soth about how the army is, like, going basically on the goose hunts. Yeah, so, I mean, that's... <laughs> so, 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 yeah, she she is, at that point, in league with a genocide. <laughs> that she, is true. She doesn't actually commit she, it, mind She doesn't you. do the genocide herself, but, I mean, yeah, But it's not... like, you know, like, what is a genocide if not basically targeting an entire species? Does not have the moral high ground in part three. No, she which does is, not. Which is what makes it interesting. To e me. Exactly. That That's the main um, thing for me is that it's interesting because of the fact that, like, I, I guess you could put it this way, right? Do you care about this? Do you care about this character? Do you um, feel things when this character does this thing that you don't agree with? Well, that's a good thing because suddenly, like, it, like the game made you care about this character. And now that the character is doing things that you're not agreeing with, you're like, hey, what the hell, game? Yeah. And I, I think, like, usually I consider that a good thing because it's making the game, it's making you feel things about the game that usually the narrative is intentionally trying to make you feel. Yeah. Okay, we got a sword slayer coming up here, and that's got me concerned. So I'm probably going to do a little bit of retreating. What's your movement? Uh, with that devil axe. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you're safe over here, Inez. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit of a retreat. Because... What's your movement? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can reach super far. Okay. So this is a safe zone, and that's not a very... That's a very inconvenient safe zone. Because I do, I do not want to deal with a sword slayer. Yeah. Um, One thing we could do is maybe, like, get someone down there and, like, take them out immediately. But we don't really have the luxury to do that because there's a sh there's a crap ton of, like, units here. Yeah, the best person to do it would be, like... Him. Yeah. Or Ephraim, but, like, but, again... But then Ephraim would have to deal with a lot of axes. Exactly. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to retreat. Um, I'm going to plant um, Garrick over here. So that he can basically just, like, block these guys from coming in. Okay. And, um, everyone else kind of just, like, retreats all, all the way back here. Yeah. Because, yeah, I, I do not want to deal we with this. We still got guy. 39 enemies on the board. Like, let's pace ourselves. Exactly. So, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, this right here. Above yeah. this square and diagonal this way is our safe spot. Okay. And you are going to go over here. Wait, before I do, what do you got? Battle Axe, Iron Axe, Tomahawk! Okay, thankfully he's not going to be able to reach too far. So... Yeah, if you want, you can put Garrick back one more so that he doesn't have to deal with the Tomahawk. Mm -hmm. And we can probably put Mulder right behind him yeah, in order will. to uh, give him some heals. So I think that's our bet. Just making sure. Yep. And just making sure over here. Yeah, we're good. I do recommend, um, as far as, like, interesting classes go... Yeah. Um, Triangle Strategy has a lot of really neat characters that, like, each of their specific qualities lend themselves to very different strategies. Like, you got... Mm -hmm. Main character is a swords guy. You got, um... You got a guy with a lance on a horse. You got, um, dude with a big shield who can taunt enemies... Uh, but then, like, your rogue character can, like, turn invisible so that, like, she doesn't draw aggro. Ooh, so you can, okay. like, send her, like, out behind enemy lines to take out, like, key targets. Um, you have a... 
Um, you have a hawk rider. She rides a giant bird and has a bow and arrow. And then you got, like, this guy who's, like, a tinker who can, like, put, like, catapult traps down on the ground so that when people s step in those squares, it, like, launches them away. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, there's a lot of really fun stuff. Like, every, every character has, like... At least one quality that's uniquely theirs. I know some people have actually been, like, you know, uh, would actually really like to see us play, um, Triangle Strategy. Yeah. And I'm interested in Triangle Strategy, too, like, quite frankly. I would love to, uh, see what that game has to offer. It's pretty good. Um, speaking of which, another game that, like, I've been, uh, getting people, like, telling me about that they really want me to try out, and I want to try it out, is Unicorn Overlord. Yeah. I don't know if you've, uh, I don't know if you've, uh, dabbled into that one at all. I am interested to try it. Um, I also have downloaded on my PS4 right now, um, 13 Sentinels, which is the same developer. I actually think I saw you playing that, like, when I, like, from a notification while I was playing something else. I might have opened it. I haven't actually played it yet. Oh, okay. Did you open it last night? Uh, no. Because, um... Yeah, no, I, I remember seeing that title in, like, your thing, and I think it was when I was playing Hades. Oh, uh, maybe. I've it's been big... playing a lot of, um... Sea of Stars... Yeah. This is what I've been playing, and I've been playing uh, Enter the Gungeon. Mm -hmm. That's been a lot of my time lately. Yeah, Enter the Gungeon is a good one. Punny as hell. Very punny as hell. Very hard. It is hard. Not... But what do you expect from a roguelike? Yeah, I'm not super good at twin stick shooters. I can, I think I've gotten to the fifth and final floor once. Uh huh. And then just died to random mobs. No, it is not an easy game. And that was with like a really good random build I got. Mm hmm. Crit would have been nice, but at the very least, we got these ca we got these guys where we want them now. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> that was a little scary. Don't quite have Inez where we want them. No, we do not. Thankfully, he's okay. But uh, yeah, I uh, I failed to notice that. Whoops. Well, Inez had already moved by the time we were drawing the line back, so there wasn't really much we could do there. Mm hmm Okay, so here's what we can do. As long as we can take out these, um, these guys, we can have someone plug up here, a swordsman, and that'll pretty much keep these guys at bay. Okay. Though we do want to keep track of that, uh, Tomahawkman. Yep, right there. Okay, this is... This be interesting! My thought is to move Marissa up to kill somebody, and then move Inez into Marissa's spot. And then have, um, J Ross maybe block? Yeah. Or someone block. Something like that. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with you. Because, let me see something. Like, if we plant someone there, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they won't be able to melee him. I agree with you, actually. So. Let's see how we can handle this. Maybe we could have Ephraim kill the, uh, kill the Sword Slayer guy. Well, he doesn't have the Sword Slayer equipped. Oh, that's true. So Ephraim doesn't even need to do that. I have a feeling that that's going to be Erica's job. Okay. She has, a uh, she has Siegeland. Yeah. We could also do it with Joshua with Aldhalma. Okay. Yeah, either or. Yeah, that's going to kill regardless of crit. Yeah, so I think that's our start. Yeah, and he has no chance to hit. Oh, Marissa! Yeah, and I, I do not fear for Marissa's life here because, you know, she's a sword. She's a really, really dodgy sword woman. Yeah, I'm really happy that we got Marissa up there mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, making her an assassin. She's doing work. Hmm. Iron Axe, Tomahawk, Battle Axe, Steel Axe. Ephraim, you don't have a... No, he doesn't have a, uh... A, uh... No, no range option. Not, not range option, but it's... Is there a, uh, Lance equivalent to a, like, Sword Reaver? I don't think there is! 
There's a there's an axe reaver, yeah. Oh yeah, there is an axe reaver, you're right, but we don't have one. What am I thinking? In that case, um I mean I think Siegman will do yeah, bonus Sie damage against these guys. Yeah, Sie Siegman will do just fine regardless. Because they are horse enough. They are equine. Yeah, let's do that next. Nice. Would have been nice for the first one. Still, we're getting some decent experience from these guys. Yeah. So, I'm not complaining. Yeah, I'm sure by the end of these runes we'll have some more characters capped out. Mm-hmm. Okay, I messed up a little bit on my strategy, but I think this will still work. We may have to leave we may have to leave this guy with the hammer alive. Okay. We don't have any armored units, so Yeah. He's not gonna be too bad. As long as we keep Molder out of harm's way, which I think we can. Who has the tomahawk now? We still gotta keep an eye on that. This guy. As long as we plug up this gap with Erica, we're yeah. good. Okay. As a matter of fact, I have a pretty good I have a pretty good um way to handle this. So yeah, let's do this. Okay, good. That dodge was needed. I do feel like this chapter is going a lot faster than the last one. <laughs> Probably because Despite the fact that we haven't moved. Yeah, there, there's more open space for the enemy to get in, I guess, is the reason. Mm hmm Like, we could theoretically just, like, have um, Erica plug this up and, like, just have Ephraim take a couple hits. Yeah, I think that'd be fine. You think he'll be okay? Yeah. Yeah, I ain't taking chances. Let's go with Siegeland. Beautiful, Erica. Yeah, I suppose my main concern was just weapon triangle advantage. But then again, we can make it so that he's not going to take too many hit, uh, as many hits. You want consistent? You you want consistency? You go to Garrick. Yeah. Yeah, with that tomahawk, all the characters can only take out the most two attacks up there. Yeah. So. Yeah, and we pretty much... Oh, that, that spider can't even reach. So, yeah, we're golden. Yeah. I mean, he can reach Garrick, but I'm not too concerned about Garrick right now. So here's what we're going to do. Bring him over here. We'll keep him equipped with the silver bow. And Ross, right over here. Uh, do you want to do a uh, hand axe so that he can counter the tomahawk? Yeah, why not, right? He's either going to go after... Um, he's either going to go after um, Ross or he's going to go after Inez. Might go after Marissa now. That's true. Or, um... Joshua. Or Joshua, which I'm not concerned about. Yeah. Yeah, if he does, I don't mind. Yep, and what we can do here to ensure that you're safe and he's safe... Nice. That's a little more experience from older. Yep. And hey, he's getting there. What level is he at now, actually, now that I think about it? I'll have to check next turn. <laughs> I hope people in the comments are freaking happy. <laughs> That sound effect is very, very satisfying every time that happens. Yeah. I don't know, like, I kind of like that whole... Boom, yeah. Like, sound effect when the crit doesn't kill. Just the sound font of this game in general is really good. Mm-hmm. Alright, good stuff, Ross. I'm okay with that. Yeah, the way this is going, we're probably going to, like, just plug up um, this area. Kind of like how we did the last chapter. Yeah. <laughs> or the last floor. Yeah, it looks like they're all... 
looking to focus on Ross. Yow! Yeah, that's a battle axe, though. A tomahawk is not gonna... is not gonna do that much. I don't think a tomahawk's gonna do 27. No, no way. Pretty darn close, it's though! It's gonna do 20. Okay, let's calm down. Now I'm even more glad that that, um... That that freaking, um... Spider couldn't reach. Okay! <laughs> we are good! So, what do we got here? Iron bow, steel sword, iron bow. You got a long bow! Okay. okay, sneaky, sneaky. Not too many weapons that are too high power damaging, though. So... I imagine we can basically just make a make a gap here with uh, three units and maybe one more like up here, maybe Garrick. Yeah. And just plug up this area and let them come to us. Yeah. There's nobody else coming around that uh, north corridor, so. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna hope for the crit. Hope here. for the crit. If not, I have another plan. Come on, Garrick. There we My go. Man. <laughs> My man! Hey, you guys pay me for a reason. <laughs> I don't even use this shield, I just throw it around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real though, like they just like, oh hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this shield over here when I dodge the attack. It's like in dodgeball when you get two people together, you do the like the lob and spike where one person like lobs it. Yep. Yeah, when they go to catch it, the other person spikes. Alright, I think I know how I'm gonna handle this. Finish him. I was about to ask if we have any archers in Mortal Kombat. We have Nightwolf, though. Uh, we have Nightwolf, we also have Kung Jin. I don't remember that. Uh, Mortal Kombat X. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kung Jin is, um, I think... Kung Lao's cousin. Oh, right. And he has that, like, staff that also functions as a bow. Right, okay. Yeah, he his whole thing is archery. I'm almost kind of okay just leaving Marissa in those pillars, because she's a dodge tank. That pillar also gives 20 a void. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just gonna milk this for what it's worth. Hope for the crit, crit again? Probably. I have a backup plan in case this doesn't work. This guy literally cannot hit. Yeah, Marissa's fine. My girl! My girl, my, my girl. girl. Talking about my girl. My girl! <laughs> I hit so many criticals. <laughs> 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 okay, that was good. Joshua envies me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got more of void. Oh my lord. Okay, you know what? I I'm gonna give you that one. That was good. Yeah, Joshua can finish plugging that. I'm thinking do the Zambato. You know what? I forgot the Zambato works on these guys! Yeah. Cool! Unnecessary! <laughs> I heard you say that I envy Marissa. She's very <laughs> talented, but that is not entirely true. You sure about that? You shut it. Alright. Just saying. Hmm. <laughs> okay, actually. Um, so you mentioned Mortal Kombat just now, right? Yeah. Here's a question for you. If a Fire Emblem character were to, for whatever God's forsaken reason, right? Yeah. Be a guest in Mortal Kombat, who do you think would it be? Who do you um, think it should be? Oh, boy. Uh... <laughs> I, I know, not exactly the most, like... My first thought was Legion. <laughs> Why do I like that idea? Because he can be 
brutal to people. Absolutely. Why do I like that I idea? I see him cut somebody in half down the top. Like, he does that to himself. Yeah. Okay, why do I like the idea of Legion? Man, that's way better than my idea. My, my first thought was just like, who could have the most grotesque fatalities? Definitely Legion. I think Legion's up there. Dude, Legion with a fatality where he calls in a bunch of other Legions? Yeah. Super cool. I would love to see that. That could be his, like, his, like, teleport, quote-unquote, is that, like, just <laughs> another can run in from the other side and you start taking control of that one instead. That sounds good. I like that. the first one, like, drops dead. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, that's way better than the thought I had. What though, though at the same time, I think still it could still work. My thought was Jafar. I could see Jafar really well. Like, Jafar, I think, would work extremely well in, uh, in Mortal Kombat. Like, he has a fatality already, the silencer. Yeah, yeah. Like, there you go. That's material right there. Yeah, give him some throwing knives and, and call it a day. Yep. Um, in a similar vein to Legion, though, um, one I can definitely see, and this will, like, um, attract the more modern Fire Emblem fan base, freaking, freaking Dimitri. Oh, yeah, yes. Kill every last one of them! Yeah, Dimitri definitely has the, uh, de definitely has the, like, life philosophy to be in Mortal Kombat. Absolutely. All right, Joshua, hang in there. I think only one other guy can make it, uh, can reach him, and that's the Longbowman. I want to see a conversation where people are going to Liu Kang saying, like, Oh, you're a Manakeet! <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, um, you know, I'm gonna, like, I I'm gonna extend this then. Um, what char- if a character from Fire Emblem were to be in Soul Calibur, which one do you want to see? In Soul Calibur. Cal cal Calibur. Um, because that, because that's that one I think I feel would be a bit more plausible. Yeah, I want somebody then with like kind of a unique relationship with their weapon because mm -hmm. that's a very weapon-based game. Yeah. Um, like like per personally, like my first immediate thought is Ike. Yeah, I can see it being Ike. Like, I can definitely see Ike having a more, like, a faster bruiser style, like, fighting, uh, fighting style, like, yeah. similar to Siegfried or Nightmare. I I'd watch an Ike versus Siegfried, yeah. That, that, dude, that'd be sick. I also thought about Byleth really quickly with the Sword of the Creator. But that is true. That might just feel like another Ivy. Um, well, not just Ivy, but it, it kind of could, it could kind of be a mix of Ivy and, like, Olkadan. Mm, yeah. Where, like, they can summon, like, multiple we No, you know what? He would be, like, Osvel. Yeah. Where he, like, summons, like, different, like, weapons, like, with his, like, magic and whatnot. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I'm trying to think, because, like, I I'm trying to avoid the obvious uh, answer of mine, because, like, I would love to see Lin. But I'll be honest with you, Lin would probably just play, like, Setska. Yeah, I feel like there's other games I would rather... I, I think Lin would fit into other fighting games better than Soul Calibur. Put her in Smash Brothers, like, please. Like, Lin could be in, like, Smash Brothers or, like, Marvel. Like... <laughs> Lin in Marvel? Yeah. <laughs> Why do I like that idea? Yeah, like, her... L like... Yeah, when they finally make, like, Nintendo versus Capcom, have her and Strider hear you, like, dashing oh, all that, around. Oh, that would be so sick. Yeah. Oh, that would be sick. I feel like another, um, yeah, I feel like another character that could really work in, um, in Soul Calibur specifically is, um, th this is a bit too easy, but Edelgard. Yeah. Like, give her a heavy, like, honestly, like, we, we need more axe representation. Put Edelgard in, put Hector in. I think that would be cool, especially if you could do, like, like, axe shield with Edelgard. Ooh, yeah, kind of. That, that's, like, a thing we haven't seen. Kind of like a different, like, kind of like a different way that Hilde is uh, handled, where she, like, uses spear and shield. Like, yeah. we could have axe and shield. Yeah. Yeah, now that you mention it, Edelgard has a really cool, unique take on a, on an axe knight. Isn't Hilde, um, spear and knife? No, 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 she's spear and flag. She, she, she uses a, she uses a standard. Yeah. No, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, I'm trying to think, like... Who else uses shields in Soul Calibur now that you mentioned? Uh, obviously, Cassandra obvi and Sophitia. Uh, uh, yeah, um, obviously them, because that's their whole spiel. Yeah. Especially Cassandra. Yeah, there's not a ton there's of shield guys in Soul Calibur. Oh my god, you're right. You you would think! Yeah. 
but yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, put Edelgard in Soul Calibur. Get us more shields. Yeah. Like shield and axe? That's a great combination. Yeah, I think I, I could see her as a like mostly slow heavy, but with some surprising burst moves. Mm-hmm.